Now I have an image open here called Snowboarder, which you can find from the info folder. And we're going to remove the white background with a technique called masking, often referred to as cutouts. We're not going to delete the white background, but we're just simply going to hide it. And this is key really, because if you do have the opportunity to photograph a subject, try and make sure that the background color is contrasting to the subject. In this case, Snowboarder Steve, predominantly dressed in black, photographed against a consistently white background. It's not busy. It's not uh, in an office somewhere. It is a nice plain white background. It will make it easier to achieve a good quality cutout. In all the versions of Photoshop, um, we would have used the magnetic lasso tool as we did with the backpacks. And it does a very good job and we can do a little bit of tidying up afterwards. But there is now a quicker way. So if I go to say the magic wand, there is a button at the top called select subject. And uh, here it is. If you were to left click on that, well, it does exactly as it implies. It selects the snowboarder in here. And um, you'll notice that we get a reasonably good selection around the outside. So you'll notice that where we get a transition between the black of the clothing and the white background, there is a what's called a halo of uh, pixels which are green. There's a transition between them. Now, if we don't remove those from the selection, there's a chance that halo will become visible in the finished artwork. Um, again, we can trim this portion out as well here. There's a little bit of the red of the hat showing in there. That's going to be distracting. It serves no purpose whatsoever as well. So we'll come back to that last, but we need to get a nice, consistent, tighter selection around the subject. So if I go to view and choose fit on screen, the next step then from here is um, if you get any of these pop ups that appear, just choose close. Um, and then from here, we're going to choose select a mask. So you literally click on one button on the left hand side for select subject and then click on select a mask. This will take us into a dedicated selection editing workspace. Up at the top in here, I would suggest you change the preview of the artwork to overlay. And then if I just click anywhere outside of that pop up menu, it will disappear. And then I'd suggest the opacity, how strong that color is, drag it to 100 to make it look really stark. The difference between your subject and the area now colored in red that will be hidden when we mask it out. So I then suggest go to your color box, click in there and then just use the hue slider. Just as we did for hue saturation adjustments, drag the little sliders that appear either side in there and pick something that is very contrasting to what's in your image. So in here, I might go to something like this pink in here. That's going to be quite different to anything else that is in the image. So having done that, I'll click OK. And then I'm going to zoom in just by using my scroll wheel in here and take a look at the edges. So that they're fairly neat and clean in there, but there is a little bit of the green hail around the outside that we can remove. So it's just a question of getting here, I'm holding down the space bar, but you can go to the hand tool over on the far left hand side um, to pan around. Just take a look at how the edge looks. As I say, it's not too bad. So the only thing that we really need to do is keep this view on screen, make sure that you've got a good view of the edge and then go down to shift edges and you can drag shift edges to the left hand side and it will essentially shrink the area of your selection. It might also be worth um, just trying the contrast as well. Contrast will just, again, give us a tighter, cleaner edge. I wouldn't suggest going above 20%, but certainly in this case, for a relatively clean edge where there's no hair and no fine details to concern ourselves with, this will be enough to tidy the edge in here. So that's pretty good. Um, we do have a little portion missing from the scarf, which we'll tweak afterwards, but from here, you can go down to the bottom right hand side and click OK. That only enhances the selection. What we will need to do is go to this portion of the scarf here. And as we saw before with the backpacks exercise switch, well, in this case, I'd say your polygon or lasso tool. And that will allow you to have a lot of control and create several straight lines around the outside of that scarf. So click on the polygon or lasso tool. Make sure you change the mode to add to selection because we want to add that portion back in to be selected that isn't in the current selection. 
uh, feather set to zero, anti-alias turned on, and then just start here where the current selection edge is, left click, and then just click along the edge in here. Don't go right to the edge of the scarf because again, it will have some discolored green pixels inside of there. Work along. And of course, back on the inside, because we're adding something into the selection. When you left click back in the start point, it adds it back in. So again, for those little noticeable regions, it's worth doing that. Uh, everything else looks okay. Just take a look around the edges. We want to, of course, remove the red from up here. So again, if there's any red showing in here, then we again make sure the mode this time is set to subtract from selection and then click in this area here along the edge. Don't be afraid to cut away or remove from the selection some of those black pixels because when you're zoomed out, you will not notice that they are missing. And then back around the outside, click around here. And then where was the smart start point? It's there. So double click and it removes that portion. So we don't have that distracting portion of red across there. Um, any fine little bits of detail like this, we can actually edit the layer mask afterwards. So I will show you that technique, which is a different approach once we've applied the layer mask. But from here, now we can see the image nice and clearly, got the selection in place. We head down to this symbol. We saw it earlier with the backpacks exercise, but masking symbols are always a rectangle with a circle inside. When you click on add mask, in this case, then it gives us a layer mask. And the basic principle of a layer mask is Black conceals, white reveals. Hence why Snowboarder Steve is shown white in the thumbnail. He's still visible in our image, but the white background in the original photograph is now shown as black in the thumbnail and therefore it is concealed. So from here, um, if I just remove my annotations and then zoom into the top of the hat in here, there's a couple of bits that we can remove. And now to do that, You'll need to left click once on the layer mask thumbnail with your mouse, just to make sure it's active because we're about to use a painting tool. Now we don't want to paint on the original photograph. We want to paint either black or white in the layer mask. Press the B key on the keyboard and that will activate one of the brush tools in here, the pencil tool, you've got other tools in here, but really the only one we're interested in is the brush tool. And then you are always painting with the foreground color. Now that is the one that's shown at the bottom of the tools panel at the upper left hand side. At the moment that's set to white. That's no good because we'll start to reveal parts of the image. We want to paint black in the layer mask to conceal parts of the red part of the hat in there. So all you have to do is go to the little double headed arrow, click on that. It switches the foreground and background color around. Do make sure they are black and white. Um, if not, you can always go to the miniature version just above and that resets them back to black and white in there. From here, well, I need to make sure my brush size in here is somewhere in the teens. I would say sort of 20 is the maximum that this should be. And in terms of your brush tip now, scroll all the way up to the top. Make sure it's set to soft round, but it doesn't want to be completely soft because we're going to get an edge that looks, well, let me show you here. If I click and drag, we're going to get a very soft edge that does not match the rest of the hat. So edit, undo brush, go back to the menu, increase the hardness, I would say to about maybe 75% and then hit the return key to make that disappear. And from here, just click on the portions that are red, or you can click and hold down the mouse and drag along those portions and remove those bits of red in there. So rather than using a selection tool, you can paint black or white in the layer mask to reveal and conceal portions of the image that you wish. And from there, well, yeah, we've got a nice tidy edge around there. The transparent area, of course, is shown as checkerboard pattern in there. And one last thing to do uh, for this video is to double left click on the name and call this Steve. And then just make sure that you save this as a PSD in the working folder. And we'll use this as a basis to add extra layers and do some healing and retouching in the next exercise.